characterize it as just a really um, positive discussion. I think we, we uh, uh, from the start, um, Kyle and I have committed. I was a player once, and, and you just want to be honest. You want people to be honest with you. And so we committed to doing that. We also committed to, you know, what we talked about remaining between us. And so I do think that there's some things that are sacred. We had a great discussion, and, and uh, I think Colin left excited. We left excited. Very much enjoyed being around uh, Colin, and uh, he seems like he's in a real good place. That voice was new 49ers GM John Lynch saying he and new head coach Kyle Shanahan had a very positive discussion with Colin and Kaepernick left the meeting excited. Cap can void the contract seven days before the start of the season and become a free agent. Meanwhile, the bus is in the building. The Hall of Famer Jerome Bettis. It has been too long. Yeah, Good to see has. you. Thanks. I'm going to start Good with you guy. here, though, Will. <laughs> Should the 49ers give Colin another shot? No. I mean, what's what's the point? Why why would you do that? What are you hoping to? What's your upside? Like he, he had a good game against the Jets. And some people <laughs> point out that his statistics were better than you might suspect when he's in the pocket. But I mean, this is a simple gambling equation. Like you buy back in on Colin Kaepernick. What do you hope to hit, Max? I mean, what is the upside on this? This is a complete. Can we answer that? Well, hold on. This is a complete reboot of a <laughs> franchise. Um, you need to start over. You need to build for the future. Is there any chance that Colin Kaepernick is your, fu is your future quarterback three years down the road? Is there any chance that this is the guy you build your franchise around for the next five to ten years? The answer has got to be unequivocally no. So why go back in on him for one more year? It's equivocally no. Um, first of all, are the Niners ready to compete now? No. They have a ton of holes they need to fill. In fact, they should trade down in the draft to restock the roster. So right now, the quarterback, in certain ways, is a tackling dummy. You know, like when people said, where could Jay Cutler wind up? I thought, well, I don't know, maybe if you don't have to give up much for him or pay much for him, maybe the 49ers, you know, they're, they're not very good right now, and just get a competent quarterback. Um, Colin Kaepernick was one Richard Sherman play away from going to back-to-back -back Super Bowls. Jaws, on this network, said at one point he has a chance to be the best who ever did it. So what's the upside for Colin Kaepernick? Now, look, those predictions fell, you know, he fell short, obviously, those predictions, and he's not an elite quarterback and all that. But at one point, he was seen as a guy who, if he wasn't already there, was on his way. And again, one Richard Sherman play away from going to back-to-back -to -back Super Bowls. What's the upside? The upside is very, very high, in fact, because we've already seen him do it. How did he play last year? Not bad. Is it a huge commitment in years or dollars or resources to him? No. Do you need to win right now? No. Does he have a familiarity with the organization and, and roots now in the area? Yeah. I mean, there's actually very little downside in Colin Kaepernick, but there is some upside. And even if there weren't, they are a ways away from needing to worry about getting quarterback right in San Francisco. So, I, I, Max, you know, it's hard for me to say this, that I agree with you, and, but I actually do agree with you in terms of there is tremendous upside. And you said it earlier. You said uh, the quarterback for the San Francisco 49 is going to be a tackling dummy. So understanding that, you have to understand. Now, Kyle Shanahan is going to be the, the head coach. Now, he's, he's familiar with a lot of different types of offenses, right? So now what he has to do is, one, assess his team and see that, you know what, we can't do the things that we did in Atlanta. The best chance that we have to, to, to have success now is to go more like maybe the Redskins offense when, we, when I had RG3. So you know what, maybe Colin Kaepernick is my best offense right now until I can bring in the players that I need to now move toward more of an Atlanta Falcon style offense. You can't have that offense if you don't have the speed, you don't have the size, you don't have the players at those key positions, the, the multiple running backs, the multiple receivers. They don't have that in San Francisco. So now he has to understand I can't just go out there and still try to run this system with no players. I will have zero success. So now I need to find a way to bridge that time from right now to where I want to get to. And Colin Kaepernick can be that player because he brings offense in and of himself, his ability to run and throw with the football. We've seen him do it. Like, like Max, like you said, we've seen him do it. We know that he's capable of doing this. So now you need to put him in the best possible position to be successful. Now, 
can that offensive line, can everyone on that team, can they be successful in that type of offense? Well, we've seen them in that type of offense. We know that they're capable of doing it. Now, can they sustain that? And is Colin Kaepernick the player that he was, you know, three, four, five years ago? That is the question I believe we have. On but I believe age, you have to, you have to you, say yes. You have to. If you, you look at the calendar, player, well, you have to be, say he's capable he of doing that. physical prime. Absolutely. And one of the problems with Kaepernick, Will, is that they, he was already so good and showed so much promise that there was a constant tinkering, making him even better in certain respects. And he took a step back. And, of course, Harbaugh leaving doesn't help. But I think the realization has – people have come to the realization, hey, if he could just be what he was, that's plenty. But he's but not. But even if he's not what he was, he's okay and he doesn't cost you anything right now. Okay, so first of all, let's just I, – I, I'm listening to you guys. I always <laughs> – that, that's about to reveal itself in my rebuttal to you. First of all, you retained the hope that he can be something he was three years ago. That's your potential upside. I think that is more than rosy. I think that's more than hopeful, and I think you know it. I think that he was 29th in QBR this year, and you both characterized him as, or the quarterback for the 49ers as, a tackling dummy, something he, I guess, would fit perfectly. So let's submit that I think your potential is a little bit of a stretch. If you're going to have a tackling dummy, Answer this honestly. Whether or not you side with Colin Kaepernick on his protests over the last year or you found it something unappealing, do you think the net public relations effect on the 49ers was a positive? Uh, From a public relations standpoint, do they want to do that again? I don't believe they have to do that again. In that neck of the woods, I don't know if it yeah, hurt them. I don't think they have to do that again. They're, That's this, true, This Max. is past that stage. They're on the other side of this issue. It's not well, still just, on the forefront every single day in, in, in the papers we'll see or, next season. or is that the, the leading story? I don't believe we'll that. We'll see is. next season, but I don't think you want your tackling dummy with a tenuous upside and a potential PR downside when you have other options. There's Jay Cutler that's going to be floated out there. Hey, by the way, RG3, your RG3, he might be out there. So if Kyle Shannon wants to run that again, mm. he might have the also exact Also debatable. If, if you put all these guys it. in there with, the, with you know, and they're tackling dummies, none of them can stand up. Including Kaepernick. All right. I think he can. It's RG3, debatable Jay if Cutler, AD Colin still Kaepernick. got it, too. And we are now just two weeks away before the March 9th deadline for the Vikings to decide whether to pick up the $18 million option for Adrian Peterson. Vikings GM Rick Spielman says he hasn't decided what the team will do. Max, I'd be very excited if the Giants got him. I don't know about you, but that is not the question. How much does Peterson have left in the tank? I don't think Adrian Peterson, I think Adrian Peterson is gone never to return. And, and, and Bus, you and I argued about this in the beginning of the, of the season. Um, and, and, and when I talk about the cliff even for Tom Brady or any player when they hit a certain age, and I, a lot of times I'll hear, oh yeah, because had he not gotten hurt, but that's part of it. It's an extremely violent sport and as one ages, their tendons have become you know, more brittle and all those kind of things. And they're more injury prone. And just exposure to the NFL makes you more likely to be hurt. Uh, but the two things compound, and, and that's why, especially at the running back position, you see very few past the age of 30 who are really good. Adrian Peterson is such a physical freak. I mean, he's come back from injuries. Other, most other humans can't way ahead of time. And so I think he can still be an effective NFL player. But I think the idea that we're going to see a prime Adrian Peterson meaning one of the, either the best back in the league or one of the best handful of backs in the league, those days are gone, and therefore you don't pay $20 million for Get him that. Drunk. Max, no. Get Max, him first of all, I, I've come to realize now that you are the, the guy that, that, that is hate a pessimist. People. Hate old people. All people hate well, not, not, all, not old on. people, but you hate like anybody that... that I heard you say Paul George is going to be done in a, in a couple of years. I mean, no, uh, I, no, I didn't say I was, that. You, Mistaken. When when the conversation I said Paul George is Magic there, Johnson. You said you said you know <laughs> if you give him a long contract, he's only got two years oh, right. left or something. Yes, That's you don't great. give. Twi Listen, I mean, he's a young is, player. He's not even twenty eight years old. Don't he's do Paul George. Get him on Peterson. So anyway, with Peterson, what you have to look at when you look at Hall of Fame running backs, and I'll I'll say this again. 3,000 carries is at the very least the number of carries that, that they start to really go downward. He's only at 2,400 carries. So he's got minimum of two really, really good years left in him as a running back. So anybody Great who years, gets bus, two, two years, uh, two years. Just come to the New York Giants. He has, I B think. Bus, he has, early in the season, you told me he's still elite. He's as good as anyone. Absolutely. Are you backing off that? I'm not backing off still. that. Not uh, at all. I think two years, two seasons, he's got two 
Big seasons you, still do you left. See in those him. two seasons on the Vikings. I don't see him on the Vikings because the Vikings they don't have the the offensive line that they need for him to have success. If he goes somewhere where, where they can like throw the football, I would love to see him in Detroit. Obviously, that'd uh, be a hard sell. Homer. But if he, yeah, I'm a homer. <laughs> if he got to Detroit, if he got to the Giants, I think he would have success. Seattle. Anywhere where they have uh, the passing game intact and somewhat of a solid offensive line, I think he can have a tremendous season. We'll leave it uh, by the way, the physical prime of an athlete, and this goes across sports, is younger than people assume it is. So when you see a 27 or 8 year old basketball player, you got to start looking at the clock. It's just the way it is. Your problem is you keep going to defy us. Wait, you you, you keep going to defy us. You just speed up the clock, man. Careful. You just got the clock on, on fast, man. Slow down. Now he turns <laughs> superstars into averages. That's yes, yes. He doesn't see superstars well, well, as anything but statistics because, on, because, a, on a sprint. Right. Well, you can the average superstar, the superstars. The superstar, too. he goes above and beyond the normal player. That's what you got to understand. Right. Like you, the Hall of yeah, Famer, I'm Jerome Bettis. Superstars. Good to see you. We will see you and Damian Woody later on NFL Live. Looking forward to that. Speaking of Cliffs, Max Kellerman, Tom Brady, he was on one literally. The man has no fear. Yesterday posting this video of himself crashing after going over a jump on skis. Should the Patriots have a problem with his daredevil ways? And should he be taking some flack for this? We'll debate that next.